It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry Lasseur and Ned Calmer. Our distinguished guest for this evening is His Excellency Ambassador Salem Sopper, head of the Turkish delegation to the United Nations. Ambassador Sopper, the president of Turkey is arriving in this country tomorrow on his first visit to the United States. But before we ask you anything about his mission here, I wonder if you'd tell us something about Turkey, its size, its population, perhaps its political system. Well, then I will begin with the second part of your question. Uh, Turkey has an area of about 750,000 square kilometers. And according to a census which was uh, taken in 1950, the population is just a little over uh, 21 millions. Our political system is a democratic republic. We have a one-house parliament which is elected by the people once in every four years by secret ballots. And uh, the president of the republic is elected by the parliament from among its members for the same term of four years. But he's more like the prime minister than the president of this well, country no, is. Well, precisely. That was uh, the point I wanted to make. Then uh, the president of the republic uh, designates the prime minister who in turn chooses his ministers, his, uh, the members of his cabinet. And the prime minister has to go to the parliament uh, with his program, and his program and his government had to be approved by the parliament before they can function. And if necessary, they would have to ask every now and then uh, for a vote of competence. They might have. I mean, they don't do it often, not in our country. Uh, anyway, we are not fortunately in that position. Well, what is the president's term of office? Uh, the president's term of office is four years, like the, just, just exactly like the term of the parliament itself, mm -hmm. which elects the president. So uh, that's uh, uh, the difference between the president of the United States and the president of Turkey. The president of the United States is both the head of the state and the head of the government, whereas in Turkey the president of the republic is the head of the state and the prime minister is the head of the government. See. Uh, well, Turkey, of course, is a member of the North Atlantic Pact, uh, Ambassador Sapper, but could you tell us something about its uh, strategic position in the Cold War? Uh, well, it is a little difficult to say much about the strategical position of any country in what you call, quote, the Cold War, unquote. But in a general way, it may be said uh, that the strategical position and the potentialities of Turkey are of utmost importance for the defense of the West and for the defense of the Middle East and the Mediterranean. Uh, the Cold War, of course, we deplore that like uh, the rest of our allies, but uh, we have to stand firm Mr. Ambassador, one of the uh, things I think that will interest Americans most of all... May I smoke? Oh, by all means, I'm sure. Uh, ...is the position of Turkey in reference to Russia. Uh, how uh, is uh, the Soviet, the new Soviet attitude under Malenkov, affecting relations with Turkey? Uh, well, of course, <coughs> after the death of Stalin, there was a softening of the Soviet policy towards Turkey. Uh, exactly like uh, the softening which uh, uh, took place towards the other countries, which we witnessed almost everywhere. <coughs> uh, but uh, I think that uh, it is in the interest of the peace of the world uh, to be very cautious about that uh, sort of softening of the policy. And uh, we should wait and see whether uh, suitable 
solutions can be found to the major problems which are still pending. In other words, the Turks are just as skeptical as we are. Uh, well, we, let's call it cautious. <laughs> and what about these reports that we're always having, or that, it, that is to say that we, we periodically get about constant, vast concentrations of Soviet troops on the Turkish frontiers? How much is there in that kind of story? Uh, well, I don't know, but I am rather inclined to believe that uh, that is a part of what you call the Cold War. I don't think that uh, there has been much increase of the Soviet troops along the Turkish border for the last, let's say, year or two. Uh, well of course, I'm not an expert in military affairs, I don't know, but uh, that's a feeling I have. Ambassador Sarper, your president's visit to the White House will mark the first time I think that a Democrat president is visiting the head of the Republican Party in this country. Now, was there any uh, similarity between the Democratic Party of Turkey and the Democrats here and the Republican Party? Uh, well, uh, yes, in a way. But otherwise, I think that uh, the names of uh, our parties in Turkey, you know, that uh, uh, the party in power now is uh, the Democratic Party in Turkey. Uh, the founder of the party happens to be President Bayar, who's arriving tomorrow to the United States. And uh, in the elections of May 1950, they came to power. And uh, the Democratic Party is really democratic in the real sense of the word. Was it as conservative or more conservative than the Republican Party? Or? Uh, no, no, by far not. Uh, on the contrary, I may say that uh, the, uh, in its, at least in its economic policy, the Democratic Party is liberal. Uh, and uh, very firmly convinced that we should be and remain allies of uh, Western democracies. United States and the rest of our major allies and others, the members of the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization. Well, your Democratic Party and your Republican Party agree on foreign policy, but domestic uh, policy, do they differ well, slightly? Well, on foreign policy, they agree. There's no doubt about that. And when the former party, the party of opposition today, was in power before 1950, the Democrats were in the opposition. They, too, had agreed with the foreign policy uh, of the Turkish governments. So I may say that the foreign policy of the present government is a national policy. By the way, um, you pronounced the name of the president a few moments ago. Would you pronounce it again? Because we're going to have to be using it on news programs from well, now on. Jalal Bayar. And he arrives tomorrow. He arrives tomorrow. We hope it was 4 o'clock. Well, Mr. Ambassador, the, uh, the uh, uh, Turkey ha has undergone a, a tremendous, uh, has done a tremendous modernization job in the last generation, seems to me. Uh, uh, your people, uh, the women, for example, have received rights that uh, were denied them for, uh, for very long. How does the position of the Turkish woman in modern life compare with the position, for example, of the woman in America or in England? Well, if... Uh <coughs> I may say a few words before I come to uh, your question, uh, to that point. I, uh, you might be surprised to hear from me that uh, Turkish woman, the Turkish woman, in the early Turkish society, let's say before the Ottoman Empire, in the 9th and 10th centuries, had equal rights and equal duties with men. For example, if I may call so, the ambassadors from other uh, tribes or neighboring countries were received both by the Han and the Hatun, that is to say the, uh, the ruler and his wife. And uh, later on, after the Ottoman Empire, when the empire began to extend to its east and west, uh, we came in contact with uh, other societies in which uh, the status of women were lower than that of the men. So that influenced the Turkish society to the detriment of uh, the rights of women. But later on, in after the Turkish Revolution, in the times of uh, Kemal Atatürk, in 1926, 1930, and 1935, 
different laws were accepted and passed, which gave uh, women, respectively, their rights in the family first, and then in municipal or mayoral elections, as you may call it, and then in the whole country as a whole. So that today, uh, women have exactly the same rights as men in Turkey. Any man or woman over 22 has the right to vote. And any man or woman over 30 has the right to be elected uh, to the parliament. Women have uh, played very prominent role in Turkey now as members of parliament, as lawyers, judges, my you, judges, medical doctors. They've completely given up the veil, have they, Ambassador? Oh, yes, engineers and so on and so forth. Ambassador Sapper, as a final question I'd like to ask you, uh, how do the people of Turkey actually feel about the American people and towards the uh, United States government? Well, uh, Mr. Lesser, <laughs> Turkey is one of the countries where you cannot hear or read on the walls these unpleasant words, quote, American go home. You can see it that in Turkey. Uh, Turks and Americans have uh, many things in common. For example, we don't have and we never had before uh, an aristocratic society, a class in Turkey. Uh, the Turk and the American have more or less the same kind of sense of humor. We know how to laugh. We know how to make fun of ourselves. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ambassador Sarfer. It's been a great privilege to have you here tonight. Thank you. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry LeSeur and Ned Calmer. Our distinguished guest was His Excellency Ambassador Selim Sarfer, head of the Turkish delegation to the United Nations. Another busy year of sports timing has already begun for Longines, and magnificent sports timing watches like these are working the world over, timing ski contests in the Alps and the Rockies, speedboat races in Florida and Mexico, indoor track and swimming events from coast to coast. Now the Longines watch on your wrist is blood brother to these championship Longines timing watches, made in the same Longines factory, to the unique Longines standards of excellence, the standards that won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and countless official honors for accuracy. Yes, for the difficult and exacting use of a sports official, or for timing the busy days of active men and women, the choice of the discriminating is Longines, the world's most honored watch. So when next you buy a watch, either for yourself or as a gift, remember that throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.